The following is a conversation with Jan LeCun, his second time on the podcast. He is, what is self-supervised learning and why is it the dark matter of intelligence? AI, machine learning, computer perception, robotics, and computational neuroscience. Eager to hear from Jan. Coming Jan to Northeast University. Ultimately, I think uh, self-supervised methods uh, that use multiple criteria are going to be the, the main method to train, to pre-train neural nets before we train them for a particular task. Well, let's have a look at this self-supervised learning, the dark matter of intelligence. But first, let's take a step back. We all know that the left image contains a dog and the right image a cat. But we also know that these two images contain different animals. The important thing is we know that even without knowing what they are called, we know how to differentiate different animals or more generally different objects even without having learned or being taught their associated names or class labels. In fact, we not only know how to differentiate different animals, but also that these two images contain the same one, even though they look somewhat different. One is rotated and one is not. So there obviously has to be some underlying information, for example certain color or edge patterns that we and machine learning models can learn to differentiate without needing specific names or rather class labels or even detailed segmentation maps. Let's have a look at how a machine learning model can learn to differentiate between the collar, head and neck of a zebra without being trained on any expensive human annotations. No detailed segmentation maps or even image labels. Let's have a look at self-supervised learning. Okay, so what have we just discovered? We have found that we intuitively recognize when two entities look similar and think that those probably represent the same object, and different looking ones are probably not the same object. In a bit more mathematical terms, we want objects' representations, for example in this 2D space, to be meaningful. This means representations of similar objects should be close together and representations of completely different objects should be far apart. In classical supervised learning, this is achieved by manually assigning labels to the images. In classification, the class labels define the groups we want to have, and the machine learning model uses those to learn to assign objects to a group based on some visual features it has learned to extract or pay attention to. It is trained on the task of matching the image to the label. So how can we teach a model anything without the labels in the first place? We somehow need to define a task where all necessary pieces can be constructed automatically, without human labor. How about the following idea? We already have our image and divide it into patches. We can now automatically rearrange those partitions and have a machine learning model, let's just stick to a neural network, learn to predict the right order of those patches. We have everything that we need. We have the original image that is automatically rearranged into an unsolved jigsaw puzzle and we have the ground truth patch order. That is why it is called self-supervised learning. We have some sort of ground truth label, therefore it is supervised training, but we have generated it automatically. Another idea for such a task is simply masking one patch of the original image and having a model predict the content of that masked patch, where we also already have the ground truth content to. If this concept sounds familiar to you, this is one of the two main tasks used for pre-training all powerful large language models such as ChatGPT, Google's Bard and so on. Masked language modeling is also a self-supervised approach where we already have the complete sentence, automatically mask out some words and train the model to predict those missing words. Okay, back to vision modeling. There are of course more such tasks, for example recolorizing a black and white image that we have made black and white automatically, or predicting the rotation of an image where we know the angle since we have automatically rotated the image. But in the end, we honestly don't care about what task we have used to train our model in a self-supervised fashion. We only want to use those so-called pretext tasks to teach our model to recognize context in images, using the immense amount of free, unlabeled data that we have. Because all this data exists, 
labeling all of it is just extremely expensive and up to a certain point, just unnecessary. After training on those pretext tasks, we want to use the train model on a new, actually useful downstream task. In other words, we want to simply remove the task-specific final prediction layer. This layer just takes the, hopefully, meaningful input image representations the neural network has learned to produce and maps them to the right solution for the task it was trained on. So, we can now just take this part of the neural network, called the feature extractor, and slap on a new prediction head that is then fine-tuned on way fewer data that now is labeled to solve a new downstream task. This downstream task can be anything from classification to depth estimation, segmentation, and so on. Training a small classifier on a meaningful representation space with well-defined boundaries between the class objects is much easier than when the representations are completely random and don't have any structure one can learn. Again, that's why we train on those pretext tasks for pre-training on large unlabeled datasets. We then simply remove the prediction head and fine-tune a new one for a new downstream task on much fewer labels data. But which pretext tasks are the best? It seems somewhat random which one we use for pre-training, right? Do we even need those pretext tasks? I mean, in the end, what we simply want is meaningful representations, right? We know that these two images contain the same object. By the way, this cute animal is called a quarker. So we simply want our neural network to predict very similar, if not the same, vector representations for both variations of the same image. So why not train our neural network directly on this objective? We have our original quarker image, and we can change it ever so slightly through random augmentations like rotation and some color distortions. Since these two different variations, in literature called different views, are created from the same original image, they must contain the same object. This means that the representations predicted by the same neural network must be very similar. Amazing idea, right? If we now train our neural network on large amounts of data following this approach of taking an image, augmenting it into two different views, and then minimizing the distance between the representation vectors, we can pretty much directly optimize for a meaningful representation space. All the same objects, even if they look somewhat different, will have the same representations. Self-supervised learning and machine learning in general are solved. Or are they? Could there be a problem with this training approach? Well, let's again look at what we are optimizing. Our goal is to maximize the similarity, or in other words, minimize the distance between two representation vectors. Well, what would be an optimal solution? Correct, always predicting the same constant vector. This is an optimal solution that is allowed by our approach, but definitely one that is undesirable, for obvious reasons. So how can we fix that? We still want to directly minimize the distance between the representations of two different views of the same original image. But we also want those to be dissimilar or far away from all other images. So how about we do exactly that? We minimize the distance between these views, in literature then called positive samples, and maximize the distance between those and all other images, which are then referred to as negative samples. What we are looking at here is the idea behind contrastive learning, which is part of the self-supervised learning family of deep metric learning. The simple contrastive learning framework, or SimClear, paper published only in 2020 by researchers at Google Brain implements a simple framework that follows exactly the idea that we just discussed. But of course, the devil lies in the detail. SimClear is one of the most important papers in the domain of self-supervised learning. So if you want to have a look at how it works and start to build an intuition for self-supervised learning, you need to watch the next video. And if it is not up yet, don't forget to subscribe to not miss the upload. Tim Clear.